Swedish design has always been famous for its minimalism and functionality. The Jazz 39 Gripen fighter from Saab was no exception. Its appearance and design clearly reflect the form follows function philosophy, according to which every element of the aircraft is designed to ensure maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. But can the Gripen remain competitive against bestsellers such as the American F-35 Lightning II from Lockheed Martin? Let's figure that out right now. Creating a modern and, most importantly, a well-selling fighter is no easy task, especially in the current conditions of the world, when even industry giants who've been working in this field for over a hundred years are forced to adapt to the government's whims and during systematic budget cuts left and right. Against such a background, it's especially impressive how the relatively small Sweden, with a population of just over 10 million people, was able to successfully support the development program of its own multi-role fighter, the JAS-39 Gripen. JAS owes its acronym to the research underlying its development. JAKT Attack, OKKSPANNINGSFLYPING or simply JAS. These words mean an aircraft for fighting, attack and reconnaissance. As for the name Gripen, it was proposed by flight attendant Helen S. Sillen as part of a contest by Flagbip and Nip magazine in 1982. The mythical creature, combining the strength of a lion and the wisdom of an eagle, seemed to the competition jury to be an excellent combination. Not to mention the logical connection with the predecessors of the JAS-39, the Saab 35 Draken or Dragon Fighters and the Saab 37 Vigan, which received its name in honor of Vig or Askvig, Thunderbolt, the Thunderstones of the Askvigger, which appeared from the lightning strikes of the Scandinavian god Thor when he hunted giants with his warhammer Mjolnir. One has to agree, the folklore company turned out to be very suitable. The question of replacing these same dragons and stones became especially acute in the late 1970s. The Swedish Air Force needed an affordable vehicle capable of flying at speeds up to Mach 2 with performance capabilities that allowed it to take off from short runways of 2,625 feet long and 55 feet wide. The latter requirement was directly related to the tricky BAS-90 airbase system used by Sweden during the Cold War. Its main idea was the defensive dispersal of the country's Air Force aircraft across many military airbases in case of war. Each of these bases housed one squadron of 8 to 12 aircraft, which made it possible to partially protect military forces from nuclear weapons and enemy airstrikes, not only making it more difficult for them to destroy the Swedish Air Force on the ground, but also providing them with additional longevity in a conflict scenario. Another goal set for the engineers was to create a fighter smaller than the Vigan, but with similar or even greater range and payload. Early proposals under the JAS program included the Saab 38 or BL-3A single-engine jet attack aircraft, as well as the Saab A-20, which was a further development of the JA-37 Vigan with fighter, ground attack and maritime reconnaissance capabilities. The option of simply buying fighters from the Allies was considered, for example, the American General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, McDonnell Douglas F-18 Hornet, Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark or the French Dassault Mirage 2000. However, in the end, the Swedes firmly decided to create their own fighter from scratch. It was to be a single-engine, lightweight single-seat craft with an aerodynamic canard shape, unstable design and fly-by-wire technology. The shape was not chosen by chance. The Swedish Air Force had garnered good experience and feedback from pilots from the Gripen's predecessor, the Saab 37. Vigan, widely acclaimed as the first canard-equipped aircraft to be produced in large numbers, 329 units built. The canard control surfaces provided positive lift at all speeds, while the generous lift from the delta wing offset the rear stabilizer, which generated negative lift at high speeds and increased the overall induced drag. The intentional instability of the aircraft was evened out by the fly-by-wire digital flight control, innovative at that time. It removed many of the flight limitations, improving maneuverability and reducing drag on the Gripen. In addition to the pair of air brakes located on each side of the rear fuselage, engineers also angled the canard slightly downwards to act as air brakes reducing the landing distance. With an eye to operation from airbases of the BOS-90 system, the Gripen has good short takeoff performance, being able to maintain a high sink rate and strengthen to withstand the stresses of short landings. Basic versions of the Gripen were equipped with the Volvo ERM-12 turbofan engine, derived from the General Electric F404 and fed by a Y-shaped air duct with splitter plates. 
The EARN-12 received increased performance and improved reliability to meet single-engine safety criteria, greater resilience to bird-related incidents and reduced maintenance requirements due to the redesign of several subsystems and components. By November of 2010, the Swedish fighter had secured the unofficial title of record holder among single-engine aircraft, having flown over 143,000 hours without a single-engine failure or incident. However, in the latest modification of the Gripen E, also known as the Gripen Ing, next generation, the fighter still received a new engine, the F414G, an improved version of the General Electric F414, capable of producing 23% more thrust than the current ERM 12 22,000 pounds VS 18,000 LB. Thanks to the F414G, the Yas 39E will be able to fly at supersonic speeds of Mach 1.1 with a full payload, making it one of the few fighter aircraft worldwide capable of operating at such speeds. Also, let's not forget about the longer service life of the F414G engines, reaching 8,000 hours and 15-20% better fuel efficiency compared to its predecessor RM12.